Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, October 10th, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary without Everyone the else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs All Pod, the Bear Podcast. In eternal length, episode number 520, or 620. Uh, I think... <laughs> I Y'all... <laughs> Oh, I, I cut you off. What did you say? I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> that, that makes me Gary without the breakdown because Damon's apparently having a moment. So, <laughs> or a day, I don't know, something. Oh, uh, with that, uh, let's talk about this. Just eat it, eat it. It's an LTAF, folks. We're talking about food, Gary. Uh, what specifically about food are we talking about? It's autumn time, baby. AKA Ooh. fall. So the question is, which foods do we, as the Cubs Out Loud hosts, look forward to the most in the autumn season? Mm. Well, or more importantly, let's go with this question. Are there certain ingredients, pumpkin spice aside, because <laughs> we already discussed that in episode 574, I believe. So, 570. No, 570. We we know our animosity for pumpkin spice. We're not basically. Wait, there's no ana, there's no animosity here. I so, like are it. there certain ingredients or dishes available in the fall weather that we are appreciative of? Kind of the same question, but but similar. Mm-hmm. So, mm. cool I mean, question, I, Gary. I suppose it's the usuals. You know, it's the 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 the, the type of the season because this is. This is a season where apples are in season. Yeah. So apples, pie, spice, apples, uh, apple sauce using apple pie, spice, apple pies. Mm-hmm. Uh, apple crisp. Apple crisp. Are apple crisp? apples seasonal in Texas? Uh, no, but they're growing up. They're well, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. But I grew up where in Minnesota, where this time of yes. year, we would actually go out and pick up from the the roadside farm stands apples, go to the apple orchard, pick our own. So, in fact, there's a near my parents' place, there's an apple orchard. Oh. So you have this whole thing. You go in one door, and they've got just like a whole bunch of different apple pro- based uh, featured products, different types of apples. Good. Nice. So, what do you prefer in your apple? Do you prefer like a sweet apple, or do you prefer a tart apple? Yes. <laughs> things so do you, it down. do you prefer a more uh sometimes unique... i sometimes i feel like a red delicious sometimes i feel like a granny smith you know sometimes okay. a macintosh when i'm not talking about my computer uh, um, <laughs> so yeah, because uh, I have learned recently that there are many, many, many varieties of apples because mm-hmm. I joined a CSA this year and uh, I have three different varieties in my kitchen right now because yeah. there's a lot. Um, 
they they send them every week you know mm -hmm. like for, so. for for making applesauce uh sometimes depending on the types your your applesauce even if you use the exact same recipe your applesauce is going to turn out a little bit different in one way shape or form Not that depends warm nice fresh warm warm applesauce is so good i See, suppose it's kind of like a warm apple no. pie filling <laughs> And that's where we're different, it's, you and I. The slightly Jared. chunky. Uh, that's like where soft you and I chunks. are different, Jeff. I I actually do. I'm not a fan of applesauce. I'm just not. It's. It, I mean, granted, it's probably because you grow up eating the, you know, peel away, like, like applesauce that's like you know mass produced and all that stuff and. Yeah, I, I do not like applesauce. Uh, I've had decent apple sauces before, and I've been okay with eating. Like we had, um, Jim made some a while back that we had with um, um, some grilled pork chops. Yeah, pork chops and apple sauce, yeah. Um, but it was, it was homemade, and mm -hmm. um, I forgot what he used. Oh, yeah, yeah, not that. Not the store bought stuff. Yeah, that's, that's and he correct. used a very specific. He used a very. He used something very specifically, and I can't remember what it is, uh, to Hots. kind of enhance it. Yeah, enhance the flavor. No, not Red Hots. No, not Red Hots. No, it wasn't that's a. a it, that's a secret of my mom's. Yeah, like sometimes this the, was, her applesauce will be kind of pink, and that's just because she, she put in plenty of. Uh, and see, no. <laughs> and then that's I don't know for me. I don't want pink applesauce. Apples aren't pink. <laughs> Basically, if if it's if it's the color of the flesh of apples, like normally, it is not good applesauce. But if it's nice and more uh, caramel caramelized color, like a caramel color, yeah, like the lighter colors, and yeah. Again, all, you can have you can have my share. Like that's fine. You can take that. I mean, Gary, you want it? Pie, I suppose. No, I like apple pie. I love an apple pie. Love an apple pie. Because that's kind of what applesauce is. It's no. Almost, almost no. the filling of, a, no. of an apple pie. No. Technically, applesauce is pureed fruit. So, uh, and some people make it akin to baby food. So, that's, that kind of becomes that's an issue the for problem, them. Is you really need to, to, to have you want it, it chunky. You want it yeah, nice and you gotta okay. have a little chunk. I mean, the the chunks aren't like they're solid enough that they that they stay together. But as soon as you bite into it, it's like no pressure at all is needed to to eat through it. <laughs> Still a no for David. Yeah, so <laughs> a lot of it is, and I made it in my uh, my crock pot. Um, you, know, you toss basically pretty much toss the uh, apples and uh, chopped up apples. Uh, and spices into the to the uh, crock pot. Uh, turn it on uh, low and just just let it kind of like cook all down. And then you just you got to stir every few hours or something just to start breaking everything up. And it just gets loose and, and everything, but you don't blend it. Not something you blend. I think it depends on like what your your preference is. I have two different kinds of applesauce actually in my fridge right now. Um, because I get, you know, I'm getting all this produce from the CSA and I need to do something with it. So um, <laughs> I actually did a whole bunch of cooking uh, this weekend. In fact, I did some uh, literally right before uh, we recorded this episode. Um, mm. So, yeah, I mean, I agree. Like, like, I think for me, seasonally, the food is driven kind of by what's available. And because I live in the Northeast section of the United States. We do get the seasons and therefore certain things come around this time of year. Mm -hmm. um, apple cider specifically is a big deal because, you know, the apples are available from the season for picking and then they get pressed mm -hmm. and they make a, you know, delicious diabetic drink, um, you know, so and yeah, the apple variety, like, you know, really kind of affects the the taste of things. So. Fair. that's a that's a, a thing yeah yeah see so like so like apple pie apple um like apple cider good you know apple juice 
in, in none of the apples if the apple cider that you get is nice and clear it is not apple cider it's apple juice i don't care what they say maybe spiced <laughs> apple juice but it's just apple juice you need the 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 the, the you want one. you want that shit to be brown right <laughs> it's supposed to be <laughs> it's supposed to be hazy not clear is, for is for sight. Point. And, and it has, it's great it has for pulp like, in it. Like you warm it up and nice warm. And I mean, you basically you can even mull apple cider and do yeah. a good apple cider. But most of yeah. it is, is a little bit spiced up. It's a little more tart than mm -hmm. a full fledged uh, apple juice. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Apples. So, and looking over this list that you sent. Jeff, um, I'm realizing this is there's of the USDA. I see that. Um, these are the seasonal like uh, produce items, and I'm looking through this list for fall, and I was like, oh, I pretty much like a lot of these things. Now, I don't know if there's anything to it because I was born in this season. Same. I wonder if there's potential that you know that comes about. Then again, it's it's carb heavy. Uh, mm -hmm. at this time of year oh, so root vegetables. yeah it's very interesting like one of the things i will say that i've again when we were talking about apples the thing that i like the most i tend to prefer my apples to be tart than sweet more tart than sweet i prefer like granny smith's to like honey crisp or whatever mm -hmm. um although i may be wrong on those that name anyway but yeah like i i prefer a tartar apple i actually prefer the greener apples than i do like the um the red um so for me uh i think granny smith's and oh the name just left my head so the U.S. the U.S. Apple Organization tells us the most popular by sales fresh apple varieties are in order. Number one is Gala, Red Delicious, Fuji, Granny Smith, Honey Crisp. That's actually one. Golden Delicious, Macintosh, Pink Lady, uh, Bradum, and Ambrosia. The the oh hell spells it went out of my head. The is it the Fuji you said? Towards the top of the list. Yeah, Fuji is number three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one I don't mind too much. My all-time favorite is a Pink Lady, and I mm -hmm. discovered that about two or three years ago. Um, I was buying my produce from, from Aldi, uh, and they tend to get more seasonal kind of variety mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. that comes through. And I discovered, like, I don't know, long last time ago that I just can't stand Red Delicious because... Well, I think a great I, fall apart. Yeah, I think because they've just been everywhere. That was the apple. Like, well, I mean, they 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 bred a large fruit producing tree. The downside is is that it doesn't have as much taste. So, mm -hmm. it, like, yeah, it's great. Like, you get a big piece of fruit, which also has a lot of water in it, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't really necessarily have taste. So, and that's that's part of what I think the complication is with produce is that, you know, we're trying to give it longevity to get it from farm or orchard or wherever to the home and to last. The downside of that is, you know, there's a lot of things that happen along the way, mm -hmm. um, including some chemical treatments and stuff. So that's why the CSA is interesting because I've already gotten – probably at this point six or seven different kinds of apples yeah um and i, I haven't even had a chance to try all of them yet so i know that's the worst part because with the misfits boxes jim sometimes get apples and I've, i will admit i have been tired of apple um for a little while i may get back into it but it's just I, it was a point like you said gary like you were getting like apples every week and it wasn't like Here's a couple of apples. No, here's like six or seven that you have a week to eat. Right. And when you're a single person, that means you basically have to eat a single apple every single day. Yeah. Like just to be able to keep up. But it's okay. Like the, the lesson learned for me is I'm going to probably do the CSA again in the coming year, but I'm not going to do the, the smallest one eighth share. I'm probably going to just do what they call pick your way. I think it is, mm -hmm. which is you select what you want each week. And kind of pay as you go, I think, is is the way that's set up. So because nice. being one person, I get enough food for two to three people every week. And like, it's just it's just way too much. Like, so before 
this uh, podcast. So like yesterday, I roasted the um, yellow fingerling style type potatoes in the oven. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, mashed up the other variety of potatoes that I had with a turnip. Um, no, sorry, with a parsnip. Um, so I made those as mashed potatoes. Those are in the fridge. The Let's see, the oven roaster in the fridge. I made a butternut squash and sage soup yesterday. Ooh, that's in the fridge. And then today was six ears of corn that I needed to use up. So I've made <laughs> a Mexican so, so corn-inspired uh, soup um, mm. that is now in the kitchen cooling. Um, but, nice. yeah, like I'm just like... I need yeah. I need to make things and then <laughs> yeah you need to make them and either frozen. freeze them either freeze them or 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 you know like you said make it so that it'll last a little bit longer you know once you cook it it lasts just a bit longer than just sitting on the shelf so right um, speaking of of um, corn uh, um, uh, <laughs> surprise surprise. Damon is not a fan of something else either. Um, Damon does not like corn on the cob. Uh, although that's more a summer thing. But one of the things Damon does like um, is um, I think it was I think it's Panera that around this time or maybe in the summer I think maybe they make a like a corn soup. No, 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 no. Nope. I'm wrong. I am wrong. I mean they make a corn soup but I think that's in the summer. Um, but in the fall, they make a squash soup. Mm. Um, fall is very and, much a squash, uh, uh, season, I believe. Oh, yeah. It's, of course, it's, got it's, summer squash, but then winter squash is in fall. Yeah. Squash Sweet and like, this is the year, like, this is around the time where like the bigger, like gourd vegetables, like, um, pumpkins, you know, obviously in, um, squash and what have you this is this is my time of year for that stuff um i ran like i just i saw the soup on at panera this is yes panera so it's not like or you know original what have you probably mass produced whatever but i had it one time on a whim thinking oh well that sounds interesting let's give it a try and it i just i loved it it was the that nice um slightly creamy texture um they also added pumpkin seeds to it um just to give mm. you a little bit of crunch which i thought was really nice and i personally love it um i think uh, that's the vegetarian autumn squash soup yes rich blend of butternut squash and pumpkin simmered in a vegetable broth with select ingredients including honey, apple juice, cinnamon, and a hint of curry, mm. with uh, finished with a sweet cream and topped with roasted salted pumpkin seeds. Mm. And now you know. Thanks, see, Panera. See, while I nerd on uh, 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 pumpkin spice in general, uh, pumpkin-based dishes, I thoroughly enjoy. <laughs> well, I, I mean, there is a key mm. distinction, and I think we discussed this before, about... Yes pumpkin as an ingredient versus pumpkin spice quote unquote because Correct. pumpkin spice is nothing more than a blend of spices that people think of that when it comes to pumpkin pie although it's not always a pumpkin pie so and pumpkin pie isn't really made from pumpkins anyways so <laughs> again go back to our previous episode uh <laughs> so yeah i mean i think that there's a kind of a time and a place mm. for things um but it just depends on what the, the circumstances are. Yeah. But so the reason I brought up about the, the soup stuff is because like this is the time of year when I find more often that like I'm drawn to making mm. soups, having soup. Um, I'm hoping I can get now that I think about it, I probably should be freezing my soups um, because I need them to last into the winter because that's really when it hits me. It's like the snow is falling outside and it's cold and I want something warm. And so. Mm -hmm. You just pull out of the freezer and then yeah. defrost in the microwave and defrost and cook in the microwave or something. Yeah, or I mean, just pull it from the freezer, let it sit in the fridge for a day or two, and you know, let it slowly defrost. And then all you just have to do is like heat it up in a you know cup, bowl or a cup bowl, or a pot or yeah. a pan or something. Yes, okay. and it's funny. 
I like soup, but soup will not be my only, like, the only thing I have for a meal. Like, soup is a side to me, personally. <gasps> I think it depends on what it is. Like I'm looking at Panera's menu now. Thanks, Damon. And, <laughs> You're welcome. Um, they've got this ten vegetable soup, which to me looks a lot like a stew or a stoop. Um, you know, cream of chicken and wild rice soup. Uh, kind of almost looks like a casserole, like but more liquid. So to me, and you know, of course, these look gorgeous in a little baguette bowl. But anyways, um, <laughs> so I I'm cool with soup being a meal, but it needs to be substantial. So, yes. like a blended soup probably won't feel satisfying enough. Mm-hmm. Hence, I think a lot of times, especially we were raised on tomato soup with grilled cheese, like as some sort of a combo type classic mm-hmm. thing. Um, so I like, like to me, it's like you get soup and sandwich where when it comes to like chicken noodle soup, I don't think of it. Let me phrase that chicken noodle soup. That's homemade uh, <laughs> as opposed to like uh, yeah, made from vegetables. a certain company. Right. Um, I think of that because it's got vegetables and noodles and meat and, and that kind of stuff. So to me, that's more substantial. So like I would be OK with that. But. That being said, I probably would not be okay with just like a little six ounce portion. I'd be like, uh, no, bitch, like this is my meal. <laughs> they, this I want a main bowl. Dish. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or like maybe a, a chili or just any sort of like beef stew. Oh, a chili. Like yes. Oh, my mom used to make the, the, I mean, I know it was, she had a beef stew starter, so it was just like a, but it was an amazing beef stew. Um, she would let it like slow cook on the on the stove forever. The home smelled the house smelled so good. Um, and that's one of the few times I think that would be okay. like that was the meal because it was a beef stew. It was like because it was the beef and the carrots and celery and onion and and the the bouillon or broth and what have you. And that I was okay with as like a meal. Um. Uh. Chili is my big one, and surprise, surprise, not Scott, not Cincinnati chili, y'all, not Cincinnati chili. I'm talking like chili with beans and 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 right. and, and sometimes noodles already in it, just all blended together. Like that is that's my chili. Well, I think there's a distinction. Like Cincinnati chili is in the sauce kind of like family of things, and I say it that way because. Having had it, it's a topping more so than like mm-hmm. having it in a bowl. So to me, that's like Greek dog sauce mm-hmm. or Red Hot sauce. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like so it's a meat based sauce that has tomato like as well, but then a whole bunch of seasonings and things. So mm-hmm. it's very dis- it's very different. And I can imagine for other people from especially outside the U.S. for food culture, they're kind of like, wait, what? Like. Here's seven different things, and you call them all chili, and they are nothing alike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they're all chili cause... because they all have chilies in them, right? Presumably, some type of chili spice, whether it be powdered or actual like chili peppers, and and that's another distinction, you know, that they could be, you know, it could have a meat or a non-meat. Um, you know, is it all beans? Which then some people would be like, well, that's kind of like, you know, baked beans or a bean casserole. Anyways. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, I think this is the time of year it's more robust, more more hearty. And mm-hmm. I think now that I'm thinking about the soup stuff, the upside I appreciate about that is that it can be a, a starter to other things. So, like, I'm thinking about, like, the butternut uh, squash, the soup that I made. Like, it doesn't, it, it was pureed beyond life itself on purpose (laughs) so it's a very smooth kind of velvety kind of soup on um but in my mind i was like oh but i can do things with that Mm -hmm. like i can add some type of a carbohydrate to it i can add a protein Mm -hmm. yeah i mean like there's there's things that you know can be modified be enhanced right so it's not just simply straight up soup i mean it can be but who knows so Mm -hmm. yeah i think um i mean i really do think the produce is part of a the driving factor uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I crave though, or like need. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there really is anything that I, I crave, but 
but I think a, a lot of this time is a lot with the 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 chilies and soups. Yeah, around it, just because it's all this like. It's kind of like having, you know, when the weather starts getting colder, you just enjoy having like that hot mug of tea or something, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. hot coffee or even hot chocolate. Oh um, yeah, uh, that, those warmer, those basically warmer dishes. Yeah, mm -hmm. end up being a little bit of it. Yeah, there's a lot for if you look at the seasonal list. A lot of it you would normally think of being something you would have have been something cold mm -hmm. uh, or even if you're just eating it outright but then there's a lot of you know hearty vegetables that you end up cooking uh, you've got and things you use in cooking like garlic is seasonal in the fall mm. um yeah that color makes greens. Sense. I, yes. I don't know much about color greens but aren't those usually uh cooked yes Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Uh, mushrooms. Onions, of course, that's usually used as a ingredient. Same with parsnips and turnips. And root vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, carrots, obviously. Yeah, basically, I think a lot of the root vegetables and some of the heartier um, stem vegetables, like cauliflower. And did I see... Yeah, cauliflower and broccoli. Mm. Bell peppers around this time. Peas. So I think what becomes difficult, especially in American culture, is like a bunch of those that you just went through listing, Jeff, are available year round pretty much now. Yeah. So like we've lost the seasonality of things. I remember when I was a kid and I was in Boy Scouts, like we would get uh, citrus from Florida and sell it like as a fundraiser so we would get cases of like oranges and grapefruits like that mm -hmm. would come up and, and we would sell them and people would buy like you know a case of citrus or whatever and because they could a couple pounds of things right and right well yeah. like well. i mean we're talking in the 80s so i mean we're talking like 40 years ago at this point um and it was so yeah it was a very different kind of landscape because now i can pretty much go into any store and i can pretty much get anything year round um Fair. despite it being more seasonal so like you know jeff when you said about garlic and i was like garlic i'm like that's a 365 thing like you know you know <laughs> you can get that on. anytime you get that anytime um I, one I like this i'm looking through the list here and i am seeing some repeat between each of the yeah. season like oh yeah uh, first on the list for spring apple summer <laughs> apple uh, fall apples winter apples <laughs> Right, and that's interesting because apples technically are late summer, fall, like mm -hmm. season, like when they grow. But that's I, I think they're kind of recognizing that like they're available year round. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, they list herbs year round as well, but I'm like, mm, they don't really grow in the winter, not outdoors. No, no, no. No garlic in the winter. Apparently. Huh. Interesting. But the rest of the year, garlic. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything that I specifically have. Although, Jeff, you mentioned about hot chocolate. I did have, I did make some actually a couple of weeks ago. It just got cool enough and I wanted a hot beverage, but I wasn't really in the mood for tea. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted something a little more substantial. So I was like, okay, so here's my trick for anybody who does like instant packets of hot cocoa. Mm -hmm. um as opposed to like quote unquote real milk chocolate uh hot cocoa mm -hmm. hot chocolate so i you know heat up the water um i double up if not triple up on the powder mix i'm just gonna oh. tell you that right now this because uh -huh. if you read the directions each packet is for six ounces which is technically three quarters of a cup so if you look at your coffee mug kids it's probably at eight to ten ounce or if you really like something <laughs> coffee mug yes, available as... at zazzle.com oh wait it's upside down fuck <laughs> <Ding>. <laughs> <laughs> right now mind you my this is not a comes out lead one and this is full of pens um and it has like some stuff uh done on it by my uh great grandmother uh when she was alive but anyways this is a big cup I can like, see that. Yeah, this is probably 
three to four cups of, of a beverage or whatever. So Cubs out loud chili bowl available no, this now. Is the, this is the soup bowl that Trevor oh, has a handle. Cubs out Cubs out uh, well the chili bowl also has that's a handle, the dot com. The chili bowl has a, a, a straight bottom. So it doesn't have the curved bottom. Interesting. Uh... So, um, if you're gonna make a hot cocoa, that's my little tip to you: is like you could beef up the beef the, it up by adding the, another packet or the, two. The flavor and the, not so much the thickness. Like Here, here's um, here's here's my recommendation when it comes to making hot cocoa: like, uh, don't use water, use milk. I agree. Milk mm-hmm. is a much more substantial liquid to use to heat up. Um, yeah. I don't put milk in my electric tea kettle, <laughs> uh, so that's more of a saucepan kind of kind of deal. Yeah. Or my, um, I have my, I have so put the so put the milk story. in into a, the, a cup and pop it in the microwave for a few. Minutes. Yeah. So story time. So my, me and my sister used to love making hot chocolate. Uh, one of the main reasons was we would make it with milk. Now you have to be careful with your boiling milk on the stove because. Uh-huh. Get it to a point, it's going to scorch. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> Cup more than on more than one occasion, um, you turn away. Mm. You know, you're, you're you're. This was when I was young. That's I was like, why we. That's why when I was a kid, we made it with in the microwave. Or, See, or and there, I'm up, like too much the microwave. worried about it boiling over and yeah, making it back. You just have to watch. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I boil it, like microwave, no. I'm making it on the stove with the pan, stirring it, looking at it, keeping an eye on it, making sure it doesn't, you you want it to get hot enough to where it's not quite ready to little boil. Bubbles. Yeah, a little bubbly, but not too bubbly, because if you get it to too bubbly, then it's going to get, like, it's scorching, so. Just a little bubbly. Once you start seeing, a, seeing that it's, it's bubbly, you're pretty much done. Yeah, right, yeah. which theoretically beads by definition it's starting to simmer you can just get Mm -hmm. little itty bitty bubbles and like the the more bubbles that you get the faster they come then you're moving into boiling Mm -hmm. territory like soft boil hard boil rolling boil (laughs) so yeah like that's a whole challenge but um yeah in the past like what i was being more persnickety than i am right now i guess um like i went the whole I'm buying shaved chocolate. Oh, it's like you know, powdered vanilla, oh. and oh yeah, like I was being super. super oh, girl, I don't got that for that. For that. <laughs> well, that, that was that was two jobs ago, you know, <laughs> when I was all like, Ooh, look at me, like you know, and you but to be, fair, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I didn't have that hot chocolate very much. Like that was a treat. Yeah. So like the container um, and the stuff was like, this is when I want to have some special hot chocolate. And there was, and I wouldn't buy very much of it, you know, so it only made like maybe three, four cups or whatever. So it was like, you know, maybe once a month in the winter, I might have that or something. And when so. in doubt, you can be like my mom and uh, get pretentious and uh, request it, order the Ghirardelli powdered. Mm. Right, right. Because I will admit, like I was raised as a Swiss Miss kid, mm. like that was the hot cocoa that we had, and it's the hot cocoa I have downstairs in my kitchen. Uh, we were not as quick. Really interesting. I Swiss Miss. Our car... no. We no. we didn't do packets. We did containers. What was that one called? David David's like <laughs> racking his thinking... brain. It's not. It's not. It's did not. It have anything to do with the well, carnation? No, it wasn't carnation. Uh, did it have anything to do with the bunny? Nestle. I knew it was Nestle. It was Nestle, Nestle came in a red Nestle. box. Yeah, it was Nestle. I think. Oh no, that was the Nestle Nestle. Yeah, yeah. We didn't do Nestle. Oh, it was funny. You say Nestle quick, which I think is the same company. Maybe. Yeah, it's Nestle. Yeah. Or wait, wait, wait. Hold back, kids. This goes to show how old you are. Did you do Alba? Hot no, no. The sugar free because that was no. the diet. Oh craze. no, 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 no! Why no. would we ever do sugar free? Hell to the fucking God no. forbid! Sugar, sugar free. This was the time yeah. of tricks are for kids and yeah. Like I, we'd ask we used for to get... like uh, cocoa puffs. And for... Oh, and we also we would also do um, 
we do her like we would actually do the Hershey's, like the syrup. Hershey syrup, yep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Warm up the milk and then like pour in the Hershey's and just it's the same thing, kind of. It's just a syrup it's as opposed to a to a um um powder. God bless it, y'all. Word. I mean, oh, even oh. nowadays, like uh, when I make coffee, uh, I use a chocolate coffee creamer. Mmm. I used to have some. Like, well, no, it wasn't that good though. It was a sugar-free one. There was one I had at work. So I got this four, three or four pack of creamers when, when I was drinking coffee at work pretty regular, regularly. And one of them was um, like chocolatey, creamy chocolate or something like that. And, but they were sugar free. And the, it was the worst one. Because <laughs> it, it didn't, because it was, it was fake because it was the powder. And then it was fake because it didn't, you know, the sugar wasn't there for the chocolate. So it was this like chocolatey ish tasting thing. And it never, it just, it, it didn't taste right. It, I didn't like it. I did not like it. It was the one I had the least. And I ended up throwing it out when I was packing up, packing up my office because I was like, I know I'm never going to drink this. I'm never going to use it. It'll sit there until I absolutely have to use it because it's the only one left. <laughs> oh well. My That's my fair. mom actually has speaking of uh, hot beverages a recipe for uh, uh, what we she referred to as friendship tea, although I swear she called it Russian tea at some point in time. Mm. Uh, and it included. can't find it anyways but it, it it included uh just like the powdered iced tea mix um uh unsweetened she would have a little bit of lemonade powder and then um uh, hey as well as some cinnamon and cloves and okay i made a minor what i determined to be an easier version Trying to find my recipe for it. Interesting. Huh. I guess it makes sense. It's not. It wouldn't be something I would go to. But I, I guess that again, it's you know, again, it's probably like when orange and clove go together. And I mean, it's tang. And you got the lemon, which is just another citrus. Hmm. Eh. Eh. It wouldn't be my go-to thing, but it, it probably was good. So now I'm visiting. Uh, for those of you that have not heard of before, there is a well-known uh, spice house um, called Penzies mm -hmm. uh, that has stores that I actually have um, uh, been to a couple of the different stores. And it got me thinking. I was like, oh, but I really like their hot cocoa mix. Um so I was like, let me go visit their site and see what they have available. Um, yeah, because Sam like, loves pansies. All of like, if you if if you've been in our kitchen, um, you look to the to the left. There's a whole spice rack, and it's layered of nothing. It's I think majority, if not all, pansy spices and yeah. blends and what have you. Um. Ooh, so now the big question becomes, do I want a jar or do I want a bag? Ooh. You okay. get more in the bag. For mm -hmm. less. Yeah. I already have lots of jars. See, this is this is where it gets dangerous because I'm like, mm, damn it. And the Penzies always has a sale. I know. They're having a <laughs> shipping thing right now if it's $24.95 or more. There so you it don't go. take much to, to choose uh -uh. that. Uh-uh. Um, so one of the things I in like am craving and I'm realizing I'm craving it right now, um, sweet potato pie. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. Interesting. You don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I understand. Uh, I, I don't uh, necessarily like sweet potato pie, but I like sweet potatoes. 
Yeah. Like mashed I love sweet potatoes. Sweet, mm-hmm. sweet potatoes with yeah. my Thanksgiving dinner, um, mm-hmm. with all the other stuff, but uh, sweet potato pie, not, not much of yes. a fan. Uh, I'll go with my pumpkin pie during that time, but yeah. Sweet potato pie, um, still gourds, casserole. By the yes. way, I found my the, the friendship tea recipes. Mm. So we got one cup tang, two tablespoons of sugar, uh, a cup and a half of instant tea, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of cloves, ground cloves, of course. And then lemonade uh, mix to taste. And that's basically ratios. Mm. So you could mm. you could double that, triple that if you want to make more and more. And then it's mm. just, you know, mix them all up into a, in a bowl and save it in a jar. Or mm. somewhere. Okay, it's, uh, I simplified it to be basically took out the sugar, took out the lemonade to taste, and I use lemon iced instant tea mix. Um, basically, that takes care of the lemonade part of it. Um, and, but it's basically the same thing, just without the sugar and the lemonade to taste. Mm. So it's sl- slightly different of how I do it. I, I Basically, I think because I'm using the lemon, lemon iced tea, I don't need the tablespoon of sugar or two tablespoons of sugar or the uh, lemonade mix. Mm. But otherwise, pretty much the same thing. So, and, while here. And all it is is I, I use for uh, typically for a mug, I'll use three like regular tablespoon, like okay. the spoon you would have on the table. Then the mm-hmm, mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I would put about three heaps of that into the mug and then just hot water and then stir and there you go mm. so nice and instant an instant tea mix mm. and it's tasty and comforting and warming the cinnamon and cloves i think kind of take the the sweetness and kind of like mellow it out a little bit to feel mm. more warm fair <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm falling down a rabbit hole at Penzi's. I've noticed. <laughs> well, I'm like, oh, they got all these different things and like some of the seasonings I haven't tried. So I'm like, mm, there you go. do I want to get that? Do I not want to get that? I, I will own when we went to um, we went to a spice shop in Bloomington, uh, not Bloomington. It was in Nashville, um, Indiana. Um, and we went there and it's very easy to just be like, oh, this is really good. And I could have this and this and this and because their blends were really amazing. Um, mm-hmm. We bought probably more than we needed to, but we, we bought a lot. I liked it. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, I mean, I really think it's mostly, you know, we've talked about this before that we're moving into comfort food season. Um, yeah. So I think that's a, a big piece of the, what we kind of move towards or, or gravitate to. And I'm looking forward to that. You know, I, I'm going to have to be a little careful, but, you know, it's going to be casserole season soon. And, mm-hmm. you know, I don't mind making things. I just have a tendency to make a big nine by 13 and then I have it for ever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about three days. Sorry. But it doesn't eat it. Uh, I mean, it really kind of depends. Like earlier this summer, I made a squash bake. Um, so I had like uh, yellow squash and zucchini. And so I ground up some meat and then cooked off rice and like, so I layered it in a casserole dish and all this kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. it turned out really good, you know, panko crumbs on top and toasted. But, you know, after about six servings of it, when a whole thing is like double that, I was like, Ooh, okay. like, <laughs> Yeah, that's my usual thing. Jim will make casseroles every once in a while and he'll get like the big tray, the big thing of it. And it's like. You know, we have it for dinner, and I'll have some, like, so the big, like, it's not my 13, and we'll maybe eat a quarter to a third that night. So that leaves the rest of it for lunches that we would have during the week. Mm -hmm. And when I was taking, when I was working at home, not working at home, working downtown and taking in a lunch, you know, 
I would bring it in and I would have it like two or three days in a row and I would be done. Like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I just can't. And I will say that's one of the things I think that, that for me, I find the most challenging is people who are like, I'm going to wear this exact same thing every single day for dress. I'm going to eat the same things. Like I'm going to have this exact same thing for breakfast every morning. And I'm like, I can't, I've tried and it just, I get bored, like Mm -hmm. super bored and be like, I need, I need variety. I need texture. I need something else. So Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes a challenge. I need something more when I'm, especially when we're eating like food for me is like the big one. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't have the same thing every day. Although I didn't for breakfast, I tend to have the same thing. Um, But that's just, I think that's more out of convenience for me than anything else. But lunch and dinner. Yeah. Not as important to you, but lunch and dinner is when things you want a little variety on. Like I'll have, I have been essentially making sandwiches for lunch because, and Jim gets like the casseroles or leftovers and stuff because it's faster for him to reheat because he only has a 30 minute lunch, whereas I have an hour. So I tend to make sandwiches. Um, and I, you know, we have a lot of the same things, like the same deli meat, the same cheese, the same bread. Um, I tend to change it up by subtly changing ratios between some of the condiments that I put on it or the meat. Like if we, if we, sometimes you don't, sometimes uh, not pickles it's mayo, so much. sometimes it's uh, 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 mustard, sometimes it's mm-hmm. both. Sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's Dijon mustard as opposed to um, regular yellow. Uh, yellow or uh, spicy brown. Sometimes it's honey mustard. Um, uh, I picked up recently. I haven't tried it yet. Speaking of mustard, I, mustard is one of my condiments of preference. Mm-hmm. Like I will pick mustard hands down over ketchup. Like mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. that's the way it is. Um, French's came out with not this year. I'm thinking last year market wise. A roasted garlic mustard. Mm. I'm very intrigued. It came in a little itty bitty bottle. Um, so it's in my fridge at the moment. And I saw it today and I was just like, can I add that to something? And then I was like, <laughs> not really. So not right now, you know, not something you've got right available to do right now, but maybe later. Right. But um, yeah, like again, it's you know, I love a little variety and don't get me wrong, like I'm sometimes I'm okay with the same thing. But it, I like food is one of those big things where a variety is great. And this time of the year, especially when you're wanting that hearty, comforting, like, you know, stick to your ribs, like filling meal, um, you get a lot of options and choices because of the plethora of like one, the plethora of, of ingredients that are out there. And then two, um, it's normally you wanting to keep the oven on and keep things warm Mm -hmm. or cook things longer. You know, you're probably going to want to do the bread bake that takes, you know, 30, 40 minutes in the oven because you're not worried about the home, the house, like burning up because it's not 90 degrees out. (laughs) I will say that is one of the most frustrating things about this time of year is that it's not quite cool enough out. Mm. So when I've got potatoes roasting in the oven and I've got other potatoes boiling in water and <laughs> like like the kitchen just became this kind of hot box and I got the ceiling fan running and like at one point I was like, screw this noise. Like and what really made me pay attention to it is I walked out of the kitchen to go into the living room for something and I was like, oh, it's so much nicer <laughs> in the living room. So I walked back into the kitchen and opened the back kitchen door and I was like – like get out heat <laughs> yeah i need to air this out like this is problematic um well, yeah, that's a bummer. i just checked yeah. to see what was available at the uh from instacart and i've got french's yellow french's spicy brown french's honey mustard uh french's uh horseradish deli mustard oh. uh chardonnay dijon and honey dijon mm-hmm. um, and that's about it they also have the, uh... a honey mustard dipping spot yeah, the horseradish mustard is really good. I will. Oh, I, I, mm, no. nope. See, you're saying no. 
I'm saying yes. You could say, baby, you could say yes all you want. You could have my portion. I just okay. I cannot stand horseradish. It is too, too hot, too, too mm. petite. It's fine with me. I actually just yesterday we were at Friends and I went to the UDF and picked up some Grippo's cheddar and horseradish chips. They are so, so good. I know they're not your thing, but you're missing out. It's okay. Mm-hmm. You can you can have my portion. I'll have I'm yours. Perfect with that. I will take your horseradish. Oh, and so wow. we'll see. And the, the roasted garlic mustard, is that just in the jar? I think so. I just Yeah, I think it's only in a website. Yeah, it's only in a glass jar. Like I see that it's available from Amazon, but baby, that price is is astronomical for such a little itty bitty jar. I'm like, uh no. No, nay, nay. <laughs> Stop doing that. Because that's crazy. So anyways. But oh, yeah, so, so those are the kind of foods, I mean, you know, that I think we're we're moving into. And um, Well, I don't think that's for a single jar. I don't think I read it, but... Anywho. No, it's a six-pack <laughs> based off of what I'm seeing here. Okay. Well, that's more reasonable. <laughs> Because I was like, ain't nobody paying twenty dollars for a little five ounce jar of mustard. No, Sorry. No, it's it, it's a six pack. It, by by nobody, topic. I mean me. <laughs> Look, if you like it enough that you want a six pack, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Ooh, there's Fun that. Yes, there you go. Oh. All right. Future category condiments. Okay. Fuck. I'll add it to the list. Condiments. In the meantime, uh, anything else before we go? No, I think that's the show. Oh, I think we're good. Everybody kind of like was like, okay, we're done with that conversation. So, <laughs> anyway, it's just plenty of ways to contact us. Um, you can pop over to our website, comes out loud.com. com. Just us an email, comes out loud at gmail dot com. Uh, leave us a voicemail six here otherwise at 361 C. We'll talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Comes Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Uh, you can also join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash tinyurl. Reverse that. tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, uh, you can also subscribe to our calendar to see when we're planning on recording these shows at uh, tinyroll.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrement uh, at zazzle.com slash cups out loud, such as a mug. You can get a drag race mug. You can get a regular mug. You can get different styles of mug, too, different colors of mugs. You've got options. Uh, you can also get various uh, shirts, such as a version one comes out loud logo or a version three comes out logo that Gary is wearing. Um, and then again at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Uh, if you're in some other country, don't forget you can change the country so that you can get something that's local when your local prices. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, some of our designs are made courtesy of Smashy. And he has his own store at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. Um, we would appreciate you to patronize him as well. Uh, speaking of being a patron, you can do that for us at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And if you just want to send us a little bit of cash, you can do so at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, Spotify, Amazon, and Audible as various other uh, podcast directories, please rate us and review us there because that will get more people to find us. You can find me anywhere in the internet. It's box at box, poppy box, got box, something or other. And probably starting on the 26th, whichever the Thursday before the 31st is, 28th, 28th, something like that. Um, it will be returning to uh, B&D and this time we're going out of Thursday is the 28th. Ooh. Oh. You can find that over on, on my Twitch at, uh, at uh, twitch.tv slash windgem, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M. Damon. 
if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Our most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. Um, the Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Ciao for now. <laughs>